Uh, so welcome to the uh, second uh, lecture of unit 2 and uh, this lecture talks about the bipolar junction transistor and its role in biasing now uh, in the first lecture you have seen that uh, the basic introductory one uh, related to this bipolar junction transistor the working principle and uh, three different uh, regions of operations we have discussed like uh, cutoff region active or linear region and the saturation region now today uh, we will be discussing something which is very much related to the uh, transistor amplification and or i can say that this particular lecture uh, bridges the gap between the transistor working principle and the transistor used as an amplifier now before going into the biasing section let us first look at the amplifier operation so a very fundamental circuit has been shown over here with an NPN transistor, as you know, we have discussed last day that if the emitter, uh, this, this arrow signifies that uh, this particular terminal is emitter terminal, and the direction of the arrow suggests that this is a kind of uh, NPN transistor. Now we have an NPN transistor connected over here. We have the base, this is the base terminal, this is the emitter terminal, this is a collector terminal, and there are two resistances, RB and RC, uh, and they are connected uh, to VCC and uh, we have some capacitance and some signal source over here now this is a complete amplifier circuit uh, a fundamental one now uh, before going into the details of this circuit operation uh, let us uh, first uh, try to understand what happens for an amplifier now for an amplifier you provide a kind of time varying signal it may be like a sinusoidal signals like a vm sine of omega omega t now you provide this signal at the input of of the amplifier we can always consider or we can always identify the amplifier as a two port network now last day i have told you that uh, this transistor bjt is having three terminals emitter base and collector now if i want to uh, use this transistor as a two port network so you have two ports for the input side you have two ports for the output side so in that case you require altogether four ports but or four terminals but for bjt we have only three terminals so what is basically done one terminal is kept common to both the input side as well as for the output side now if i have the emitter terminal common in that case this configuration is known as common emitter configuration it means you apply the input between uh, base terminal and the emitter terminal and you uh, observe the output across the collector terminal and the emitter terminal and in most of the operations you will you will find that the transistors are used in this uh, ce configuration here also we can find that uh, it's a kind of ce configuration so emitter is grounded and uh, we, we expect the output over at this particular point so output terminal or output voltage will be measured with respect to this point and that point so these are the two points with respect to emitter i'm measuring and emitter is grounded here and for the input side we find that uh, this is applied this input signal is applied between the base and the ground that means base and emitter so emitter terminal is acting as a common terminal here for both the input as well as the output so this is a kind of configuration which is known as a ce configuration or common emitter configuration now, apart from ce configuration we have other configurations as well like common base configuration common collector configuration and so on and each and every operation is having its own advantage and disadvantage so we will be discussing all these things while uh, we will consider or we will move into the uh, unit 3 of our uh, of our course uh, which uh, says all about the transistor amplification operation now in unit 2 we will be discussing only the biasing and as i have already mentioned that this biasing uh, it just bridges the gap between the transistor as a device and the transistor uh, which can be used as an amplifier and in our uh, course uh, on electronic circuits mostly we will be using the transistor as an amplifier although you have seen last day that a transistor can also be used as a switch uh, either as a closed switch or as an open switch but uh, mostly the use of a transistor as a switch uh, will be discussed in in, in a course on power electronics now let us try to understand what happens uh, uh, for an amplifier now uh, as a layman you understand that amplifier or amplifier is a kind of device which amplifies something that means if i uh, if i if i observe the transistor amplifier as a black box or amplifier as a black box then at the input side suppose you provide an, a signal input signal of say uh, say 5 millivolt peak to peak right like 2.5 sine of omega t so 5 millivolt peak to peak signal you are applying at the input of the amplifier now if it amplifies properly then at the output side you will be getting 
suppose uh, the gain of the amplifier is say 100. So if it is like 5 millivolt peak to peak signal at the input side, sinusoidal signal, then at the output side, you'll be getting like 500 millivolt sinusoidal signal. So two things are very important. One is that the gain, the gain has to be there. That means if I provide an input of five, then obviously the output should be five multiplied with the gain. Gain may be anything like uh, 100, 200, 500. So it depends on the amplifier architecture. And secondly, the input waveform must be retained. That means if at the input side, if I provide a sinusoidal signal kind of thing, then our output side, we must be getting a sinusoidal signal. There must be some phase reversal. That means uh, if the input, input signal is having a phase of zero degree, the output signal may be having a phase, phase difference of 180 degree with respect to the input. So phase reversal is acceptable, but the distortion of the uh, output waveform is not at all acceptable. That means if I provide input as a sinusoid, so output will also be sinusoid. So this is the basic operation of any amplifier to amplify some time varying signal, a signal which varies with time, just like a sinusoidal signal, for example. Now in biasing section, we will be discussing about the, or we'll be trying to make this entire amplification operation to take place. That means this biasing acts like, like a bridge between the trans device, between the device transistor and the amplifier. Or in other words, I can say that it will basically arrange the platform over and above, we can amplify any signal. So if I want to use the transistor as an amplifier, the biasing is very much important. But biasing is not about the amplification. Biasing is the pre-processing kind of thing which has to be performed to any amplifier circuit to ensure that whenever I apply any input signal, any input sinusoidal signal or any input time varying signal, then the output is amplified. Now, before going to the biasing, let us once again review what we have discussed in the last class. That is all about the DC load line. So the concept of DC load line is coming from the, the circuit point of view, as I have mentioned last day. So there are two different things, two different analogies are taking place. One is the circuit analogy. Second one is the device analogy. So current versus voltage relationship, even if I consider this one, this particular waveform, I mean, uh, this particular uh, circuit diagram, then you see that this device is connected, this uh, uh, transistor is connected. So for this transistor, uh, this NPN transistor Q1, it is having some I versus V characteristics. For input side, you have IB versus VB. For output side, you have IC versus VC characteristics. Now, since we are using this circuit or this particular amplifier or this particular uh, Q1, this transistor as an amplifier, so obviously following some uh, circuit rule, this KVL rule and KCL rule, there must be some current voltage relationship with respect to the circuit point of view. Now, there are two different point of view. One is the circuit point of view. Second one is the device point of view. Now, this load hand that the collector current over here that is flowing through this terminal, this IC that is flowing through this RC. So this collector current, what I can write, this collector current, while it is flowing through this RC, so there will be a drop of IC RC. <laughs> So VCC minus ICRC minus VCE will be equal to zero. In other words, I can say that IC is equal to VCC minus VC by RC. Here we apply VCC plus supply plus VCC like 12 volt or 10 volt. And there are two drops, one across this re resistance RC, that is ICRC drop, and one across this, this uh, transistor Q1, that is VCE drop, collector to emitter drop. So VCE and ICRC, these two will constitute the VCC. So in other words, I can say that VCC is equal to ICRC plus VCE. Now from that equation, I can write that IC is equal to VCC minus VC by RC. Now this is the governing equation to draw the load line for the output circuit. Similarly, we can have the load line for the input circuit, which we have uh, seen in the last class. Now from this particular expression, IC is equal to VCC minus VC by RC, you find that there are two different variables. One variable is this VC, which is nothing but the terminal current at uh, terminal voltage. And second one is IC, which is nothing but the terminal current or output current. Now, there could have been two different possibilities, two, two extreme conditions. One is that this VC can be equal to zero, in which case the current will be maximum, which, uh, which you normally say like a saturation current. So saturation current is given by VCC by RC, if VC equal to zero. But normally for any transistor, Operating in the saturation region, VC cannot be zero. 
it can be very small like 0.1 to 0.2 volt but it can't be zero but if i just neglect this uh, 0.1 or 0.2 volt with respect to this 12 volt supply so approximately i can write that ic sat equal to vcc by rc that is the one extreme condition for this load line or one extreme point for this load line and the second point is when the ic the current that is flowing through the transistor is equal to zero so in which case you will find that the vc off that is the transistor is in off condition then the output voltage will be equal to vcc because if ic equal to zero then vcc equal to vc so these are the two different points and uh, the straight line this load line is drawn between these two points and you understand what is the implication of this vcc and rc if i change vcc if i change R rc discussed in the last class now what is the significance of this vc load line now let us take this particular circuit we have this rb the base resistance over here we have this rc this collector resistance over here of one kilo ohm value and we have a 10 volt supply this is over here now if i follow the same uh, equation vc equal to vcc minus icrc as the case is and now suppose by changing the value of this rb this base resistance we can control the base current because the base uh, this particular resistance playing a pivotal role in controlling the base current now Suppose uh, for a particular value of RB, we find that this collector current equal to 1 milliampere. Now, if the collector current equal to 1 milliampere, then what will be the VC value? VC value will be 9 volt. Because you have 10 volt over here, the collector current is 1 milliampere. So 1 milliampere multiplied with 1 kilo ohm. So 1 volt drop will take place across this RC. So 10 minus 1, so 9 volt will be there across this collector to emitter voltage. I mean collector to emitter. Now, suppose I change the RB value, that means if I reduce the RB value. To some extent in that case the uh, the base kind will be increased and as a matter of fact the collector current is also increased so i'm assuming that the transistor is operating in the uh, active region or linear region now suppose if i reduce the value of rb this base resistance so then the base current is such that the collector current becomes 2 milliampere in which case you find that this vc value is equal to 8 volt because 10 minus 2 will be equal to 8 Similarly, if I change the IC, I mean, if I change RB to be very small, so in that case, IC will be 5 milliampere, in which case, VC equal to 5 volt. So for each of these cases, 1 milliampere, 2 milliampere, and 5 milliampere, you will see that the corresponding points are different. That means the cohesion point that we have discussed last day. The point where VC, I mean, this transistor output characteristics and this load line intersect. This transistor output characteristics, you have a waveform like this. Uh, cutoff region, active region, saturation region, and we, this is coming from the device perspective, and the another line is coming from the circuit perspective, this, uh, this load line, and the point where these two graphs or these two lines intersect, we consider this line to be the cohesion operating point. Now, if the collector kind equal to 1 milliampere, and this will be 9 volts, so uh, you are over here, you are over here, so this is the cohesion operating point. So obviously the cohesion operating point will be lying on the DC load line because it must satisfy the KVL law. That is VC is equal to VCC minus ICRC. That must hold good for any value of the IC or the collector current. Now, if IC is like 1 milliampere, so in that case, uh, it will be something like that. IC 1 milliampere, VC 9 volt. So uh, this uh, 9 comma 1 combination. So if I want to represent by FCC ordinate kind of thing in coordinate geometry, so x comma y so x 9 volt uh, x 9 volt and y is equal to 1 milliampere so 9 volt comma 1 milliampere uh, now uh, if i uh, go to the second value then it will be like 8 volt comma 2 milliampere and if i go to the third one 5 volt comma uh, 5 milliampere so depending upon the value of your collector current the corresponding cohesion point will be different that you know very clearly now what is the significance of this uh, so obviously the next question that must come into your mind is that how to select the q point or how to select the optimum value of the cohesion operating point so that the purpose of biasing is solved so what is the purpose of biasing purpose of biasing is that we have to ensure that the transistor amplifier amplifies any signal satisfactorily that means the gain has to be greater than one as far as our requirement and the signal must be undistorted that means if i provide a sinusoidal signal at the input side the output signal will also be sinusoid with having some gain now suppose uh, uh, we select the q point over here so uh, as you find so uh, this particular slide shows the uh, uh, this uh, these two graphs 
simultaneously on the same scale. That means uh, we have this IC versus VC graph, uh, which is identified by these blue lines, IC versus VC, which, which are coming from the device perspective or which are coming from the transistor characteristics, VGT characteristics. And this purple one, this straight line, this load line is coming from the circuit perspective. Now, as you find over here, now if, if I select IB to be zero microampere, then obviously this is this will be my Q point. This will be my question operating point, where this blue and purple, these two lines intersect. Now, if, if I select IB to be 10 microampere, so in that case, this will be my point of intersection. So this will be the Q point. Now, if IB is equal to 20 microampere, this will be the Q point. Similarly, if IB is very large, like 50 microampere, then this will be the Q point. So Q point always lies on the DC load line. So the, you have plenty of options. So don't think that you have uh, only this uh, five or six values for IV. You can select any value. It's not like 10, 20, 30. It can be anything. It can be like 5.7 microampere. It can be 3.9 microampere. It can be uh, 28.3 microampere. So you can have any possible value of IV. So IV is a continuous variable. It can be anything within the prescribed limit. So there are an infinite number of such of these blue lines. And so there could have been infinite number of such uh, intersection between the blue lines and the purple line. Then obvious question is that how to select the optimum value of the Q point? At which point I have to select that IB to be like uh, uh, IBQ? Uh, in order to find that one, uh, normally what is done? This uh, this Q point is selected to be in the middle of this load line. Suppose I I select the Q point over here. Now for this you can have a particular base current. So it is in between 30 to 40 microamperes. So uh, safely, you can assume that this value is like 35 microampere, for example. So this point, so if I draw uh, one blue line between these two, 30 micro and 40 micro, then this blue line, this transistor characteristics, it will intersect this purple line at this particular point, and this will be the Q point. So in that case, the base current will be like 35 microampere. Now for this, what will be the collector current? So if you just uh, project this one, if I just project this one, this particular Q point, across this, along this uh, IC axis, that means along this uh, vertical axis, you'll be getting what is known as the ICQ value. And if I uh, project along this direction, you'll be getting like VCEQ value. These are the quiescent operating point, ICQ and VCEQ. Now, if I if I select uh, zero microampere to be my uh, base currents in that case, this will be my uh, VCEQ, which is, which is very close to VCC, and ICQ will be very small. And if I select, Uh, IB to be close to close to 10 volt over here, and ICQ is very small. Similarly, if I select IB is very large, uh, beyond 50 microampere, in that case, you see you see that this ICQ value will be very much close to IC set. Now, it is a normal practice to select IB uh, ICQ uh, to be in between this particular uh, ex two, two extreme points. There is IC set and zero. So these are the two extreme points for the current. One is IC set, there is a maximum current, and uh, the minimum current is zero. So uh, we select normally this uh, uh, DC operating point or cohesion operating point to be in the middle, that is IC set by two. Now, why is it so? Because this is the DC operating point. That means you are setting the platform for the amplification operation to take place. So biasing basically does this platforming operation. So it creates the platform and over and above this platform, the input signal will be riding. Now, as far as we are considering that uh, this uh, DC biasing is, is present, that means there is no input signal. That if I if I go to this previous circuit, so whenever we discuss about the biasing, now this amplifier means the DC operation as well as AC operation. Whenever we talk about the biasing, this input signal is absent. This this signal, this sinusoidal variation is absent. There is no capacitor. There is no uh, signal source. This is absent. Only we have one source over here that is ECC. Now since it's a constant one like 10 volt or 12 volt, you find that the current that is flowing through this circuit or the voltage that is developed across this, it will be a constant one like uh, say one microampere base current or one milliampere collector current or say five, five volt collector emitter voltage. So this will be constant. Now, so by providing this VCC or for some other biasing uh, circuits, you will find that more than one uh, supply voltage is present. Now here for simplicity, I have constantly only one biasing voltage, VCC is present. So they will see that all the currents, that means this base current, this collector current, this emitter current, this uh, collector to emitter voltage, all these voltages are constant, a fixed one. Now, it basically creates a platform like this. So this, this line, this black line, it creates a platform. Now, over and above this, we apply the AC signal. So initially, suppose the value is like 
uh, say for example it is like 20 microampere the base current whenever this this ac signal is absent it's 20 microampere so by providing this is equal to 10 volt or 12 volt you establish a base current of 20 microampere and uh, as a matter of fact if i have uh, uh, current gain of say 100 so 20 microampere multiplied with 100 uh, you'll be getting like 2 milliampere of collector current so this 20 microampere base current and 2 milliampere collector current it will be constant it will not change if i apply a pcc to be 10 volt or 12 volt now whenever i provide a sinusoidal signal over here at this particular point if i just follow the kcl uh, kirchhoff's current law so initially because of the application of vcc we have this 20 microampere current now if i apply one sinusoidal signal over here with a peak to peak excursion like this so that this 20 microampere we have initially and over and above this 20 microampere suppose you are providing additional 10 microampere so your input signal will go from 30 to 10 so this will be the variation so let me clarify over here suppose here you have this 35 microampere base current initially this is a 35 microampere base current whenever the ac signal was absent that means the sinusoidal signal was absent the small signal was absent so because of this you have this 35 microampere this is the base current now if i apply the input signal a sinusoidal variation at this point if i connect this particular signal source by means of a capacitor to this particular base if i couple the signal by means of this capacitor to this base then this additional sinusoidal variation will be applied and as a matter of fact as a matter of fact the current variation will be something like that so now let us uh, assume that the uh, initially your uh, base current was, was like 35 microampere that means this line 35 microampere this q point is drawn for 35 microampere now i apply a 15 uh, i apply an input signal so that the input fluctuation is from 50 to uh, 50, 50 to 20 that means 35 microampere was the initial base current or quiescent base current that means no ac only dc 35 micro plus minus 15 micro plus minus 15 micro so 35 plus 15 means 55 0 and 35 minus 15 is 20 that means your total instantaneous current will vary from 20 to 50 microampere right now suppose uh, i uh, am having some particular uh, signal source for which this input variation is uh, is like 15 microampere peak okay now what is our basic operation for transistor we know that if i want to operate the transistor as an amplifier we have to ensure that the entire region of operation must be within the active or linear region because within the active or linear region this collector current and base current they are proportionally related that means ic is equal to beta times ib collector current is equal to beta that is the current gain multiplied with ib that condition holds good only under active region or only under linear region so that's why the name is linear why linear because the base current and the collector current they are related linearly the corresponding proportionality factor is beta so our fundamental requirement to use the transistor as an amplifier is to ensure that the base current component that means the total base current component must lie within the active region now if i select the quiescent point to be over here at 35 microampere and if my input variation is from 15 to minus 15 so this 50 to 20 so this variation is well within the active or linear region of operation now let us consider a scenario suppose uh, instead of uh, fixing the q point at 35 microampere let us fix the q point at 10 microampere so i change the base resistance this rb uh, i increase the base resistance uh, so that uh, this uh, base current is reduced to some extent from 35 micro to 10 micro only and uh, so this will be my quiz and operating point you have the load line load line and this is the transistor characteristics for 10 microampere uh, so this is basically the set of characteristics i have to select which one is to be true and for my uh, circuit uh, for a particular value of rb suppose uh, the iv value is equal to like 10 microampere so this will be the this will be the uh, quiz and operating point now now just try to imagine on this 10 microampere if i want to uh, apply one uh, 15 plus minus 15 microampere uh, sinusoidal signal what will happen so there will be no problem for the positive side because 10 to 25 you understand this is well within the uh, active region or linear regions no problem but what happens for the for the negative half cycle 
you have 10 microampere over here now if i apply a minus 15 kind of thing so in that case a portion of the input signal will go into the cutoff region now this is not our requirement we have to ensure that even the this peak and press so they must lie within the active region so if i select the base kind to be a 10 microampere there is no problem with the positive half cycle so positive half cycle will be amplified uh, by means of this amplifier by means of this transistor operation but the negative half cycle will be distorted a portion of the negative half cycle will be distorted similarly if i select the base kind to be at uh, say say at uh, like uh, 45 microampere over here 45 or so so in that case 45 plus 15 so it might happen that this 60 microampere uh, this particular base current uh, is uh, under the saturation region of operation so in that case the positive half cycle will be distorted to some extent but the negative half cycle is well within the active region so this is a normal practice to select the q point in the middle of the load line so that the maximum possible excursion we can exploit from the circuit and this condition is known as the maximum symmetrical swing so we have to ensure that maximum symmetrical swing is possible in the circuit so accordingly i have to select the q point in the middle over here and uh, the corresponding value is like icz by 2 and vcc by 2 over here so you have a 12 volt supply so accordingly you have to calculate suppose you have a 12 volt supply so you know if, if my uh, current if, if my supply voltage is 12 volt then this uh, vcq must be at uh, 12 by 2 that is 6 volt now if vcq equal to 6 volt so accordingly you can calculate the collector current and from the collector current you can calculate the base current if i go by this equation you know that this is 10 volt 10 volt supply is there and you, you have to ensure that if i have to have maximum symmetrical swing so in that case uh, this voltage will be 5 volt vcq will be 5 volt and rest 5 volt is dropped across this resistance so that the maximum symmetrical swing is possible so uh, accordingly you can basically design the circuit so if it is 5 volt then uh, fine so we have 1 kilo, kilo ohms of resistance so you can easily find out what is the value of collector current that is 5 volt by 1 kilo ohm that is 5 milliampere and if you know the beta value the, the current gain then you can easily find out what is the value of rb so by uh, observing this supply voltage you can easily find out the value of this rb and rc or even if rc is, uh, is there is given you can easily calculate rb and accordingly you can uh, fix the q point now while selecting the q point you must appreciate one one thing that uh, during the circuit operation uh, drifting of q point is not at all permissible that i have to ensure that uh, in my uh, while uh, operating the that particular uh, transistor as an amplifier the q point must be stable that means there must not be any drift of the q point from this point to that point until unless some input signal is applied when the input signal is absent whenever only dc signal is present uh, this uh, supply vcc is only present and rb and rc these are present i have to ensure that q point must be stable there must not be any drift any change in the q point otherwise the entire circuit operation will be distorted so here comes the stability issue stability of biasing so what do you mean by stability stability is nothing but the process of making the operating point independent of change in temperature or transistor parameters so suppose you are uh, performing the experiment uh, in winter time so uh, fine so you are getting something some value of vcq and icq fine for a particular circuit now if you uh, carry out the same experiment in summer side uh, summer time when the temperature has been increased uh, significantly say from uh, 17 degree centigrade to say 34 degree centigrade almost double so in that case we have to ensure that even for the same circuit the q point must not drift or even suppose whenever you are performing some experiment using a particular transistor and if the transistor is is damaged by some means and if i want to keep the circuit intact by changing the transistor so i would like to change the transistor and the other parameters like rb rc and the supply voltages so all are remaining same but uh, the transistor is damaged by some means so we have to replace the transistor now whenever you are replacing the transistor the transistor parameters might be different like uh, your this uh, ib value i mean your uh, this beta value it, it will change depending upon the uh, transistor configuration sometimes the beta is also a function of temperature so you have to ensure that even under this condition uh, this uh, operating point this q point this icq and vcq they must be a stable one now we know that this collector current is is a function of temperature we know this equation ic is equal to beta ib plus one plus beta time icbo now beta you know beta is the dc current gain between this uh, collector and base current so ic by ib that is beta now apart from that you have additional component which is coming from the leakage current icbo 
and that is basically constituted by the minority carriers right so uh, beta times ib plus 1 plus beta times icbo now if the temperature is increased uh, so you understand that the generation of the minority carriers will be increased to some extent and as a matter of fact this icbo will also increase so even if your uh, beta value is constant and the and the base current is constant that means ib is constant beta is constant but if temperature changes so in that case the collector current will also increase now we have to ensure that the collector current this dc collector current must not change with respect to the temperature so uh, one uh, stability factor is defined over here which is nothing but the rate of change of ic with respect to the collector leakage current icbo at a constant ib and beta so even if the beta and ib is constant and even if you change the temperature i have to ensure that the variation of this ic with respect to this icb0 must be very small so that the q point is stabilized so if i follow some mathematical operation if i do some substitution then this s and beta they are related by means of this s is equal to beta plus 1 divided by 1 minus beta dib by dic so this is all about the stability factor so always you have to ensure that the stability factor so this particular variation should be as small as possible so even if your icb your changes but the ic variation should be as small as possible so s value should be as small as possible that means the even if the temperature is increased even if the transistor is uh, replaced by another transistor having a different beta but the value of the ic or the value of the uh, vcq that that must not change with those variations so this is all about the stability of biasing and uh, based on the stability of biasing we can have different types of biasing circuits uh, starting with the fixed bias or base bias then we have the collector to base bias then we have this uh, collector to emitter bias we have this voltage divider bias we have emitter bias so there are different plenty of biasing circuits available and we have to understand the advantages and disadvantages associated with each of every circuit now let us start with the fixed bias circuit uh, which we have already discussed uh, the simple circuit the simplest circuit in fact uh, we have only two resistances over here rb and rc and we have a supply voltage vcc over here uh, so uh, input so as you see that this input terminal is is kept open because now we are discussing about the dc biasing we are now preparing the amplifier i mean we are preparing the uh, tr transistor itself to be able to amplify any signal so this is the processing kind of thing uh, before the actual amplification takes place so that's why the input signal is absent over here there's no input signal so obviously the capacitor and the role of capacitor is also uh, not uh, very important over here now let us try to observe the flow of the current so uh, here we have vcc supply voltage the base current will flow through this point this ib we have a collector current over here ic and this is the total current that is ie and as you know this emitter current must be equal to base current ib plus ic which is true for all the transistors in all the regions of operations so how to find out the base current so base current is given by over here you know this pn junction this base emitter junction must be forward biased in order to ensure that this transistor is acting in the in the active uh, active region or linear region so this base emitter junction must be forward biased so there should be a 0.7 volt drop over here between this base to emitter and emitter is grounded so i can expect that this potential must be at 7 0.7 volt so that uh, this transistor will be under on condition that means it will be under active region so what will be the value of ib you have vcc over here you have vb on this vb on is 0.7 volt you have vb on over here so vcc minus vb on by rb this is the resistance so this is the amount of current ib that is flowing and what is the collector current collector current as long as it is under uh, this active or linear region this collector current is given by ic is equal to beta times ib so simple beta times ib fine so vcc is equal to vcc minus icrc as you know which is very obvious this total voltage vcc is divided in two segments one is icrc drop second one is a drop across collector to emitter so vcc drop plus icrc drop is equal to vcc and beta is the current gain over here dc current gain which is normally referred to like h of fe right now we may not be able to understand what is the meaning of this h fe but let us assume that uh, this h fe and beta these two parameters are same so whenever we will be discussing the uh, small signal model of the transistor in, in some subsequent modules or subsequent units then you understand or then you appreciate that beta and h fe these two are same right now we just assume that these two are same and later on we will explain that whether our assumption was correct or not now from that you can easily find out the vcc off value and ic sat value as you have already seen in the last slides also like vcc and vcc by rc so these are the two points so this is all about the fixed bias circuit or base bias circuit 
Now, what we find over here, a single register is connected between the base terminal and the VCC, and there is no emitter resistance. So this is all about the circuit recognition or circuit configuration. So very simple circuit. We need only uh, one supply voltage VCC and uh, two resistances to bias the entire thing. But the thing is that uh, there is one disadvantage associated with this circuit. The disadvantage is that the Q point shifts with temperature. Why Q point shifts with temperature? Let us try to investigate. Suppose uh, let, let us consider two different temperatures. One is at 25 degree centigrade, second one is at 100 degree centigrade. Now for 25 degree centigrade, the beta value is 100. And for 100 degree centigrade, the beta value is 150. So I have to ensure that this collector current must not deviate with respect to the temperature variation, with respect to the beta variation, and with respect to the uh, leakage current variation. So that must be constant throughout. Or even if it is not constant, but the variation should be negligibly small. Now for 25 degree centigrade, if the beta is like uh, 100, you can easily calculate uh, what is the value of IB. Uh, this, uh, the, you have a 0.7 volt drop here, you have 8 volt supply. So 8 volt minus 0.7 volt, that is like uh, 7.3 volt. 7.3 volt divided by 360 kilo ohms. If I just divide by 360 kilo ohms, you can get the value to be 20.28 milliampere. And the IC value is coming like 2.028 milliampere. And PC is like 3.94 volt. Okay, good. Now, if the temperature is increased from 25 degree centigrade to 100 degree centigrade, accordingly, the HFE, the, the DC current gain of the particular transistor is also increased. Or sometimes, suppose your uh, uh, temperature is not increased, but uh, you, you replace, suppose if you find that during your experiment, you have found that uh, this particular uh, transistor is not operating well. So you have to replace this transistor. It is damaged by some means. Now, this transistor is having a, a gain of 100. I mean, the current gain of 100. And in your uh, Workshop, suppose you have found that there is no other transistor available with a current gain of 100. Uh, all the transistors they are having a current gain of say 150. So you have your circuit ready. This base resistance, this collector resistance, these are these are fixed 360 kilo ohms, 2 kilo ohms. You have made it fixed in already. You have 8 volt supply over here. Now, uh, if somehow this transistor is damaged. So you have to replace this transistor by some other transistor. But with an exactly uh, equal specification, exactly identical specification you are not getting in the laboratory. So uh, suppose instead of having 100 uh, beta, you are having a transistor with beta value is equal to 150. So even if the temperature is fixed, beta value is different. Now, if I use uh, uh, this particular topology, this fixed bias topology to uh, bias the circuit, what happens is, uh, if I uh, this replace the transistor with a different beta, you find that because of this uh, value of this 150, uh, beta to be 150. So even if the IB is constant, because IB depends essentially on the RB value. So as long as RB is fixed, like 360 kilo ohms, and this drop is fixed, 7.7 .7 volt. This is a volt. So this is 7. Point milliampere. But since you have used a larger beta, 150, because of the non-availability of transistor having a beta of 100, then obviously the IC value will be increased. It will not be. It will be no longer be 2.028 milliampere. Rather, it will be 3.04 milliampere. Now, if if the IC increases, you understand the corresponding VC will be reduced because uh, VCC is equal to ICRC plus VC. Since IC increased, so uh, uh, this ICRC drop will be more. So VC uh, drop will be less. So you have only 1.92 volt. So you just try to observe the difference in the magnitude of VC. It was initially 3.94 volt initially. Now it has been shifted down to 1.92, so it's almost half, almost half, or even less than half. So if it is like 100%, so your VC uh, drops down to 50%. So uh, by means of, so because of the change of beta, or because of the change of the transistor current gain, you have seen that there is a significant difference, a significant drift uh, uh, taking place in the value of VC, so which is not at all acceptable. So obviously, we have to go for some other uh, topology of this uh, biasing because this fixed bias or base bias, although it is very fundamental one, very primitive one, but it cannot be used for linear amplification operations. So this has been summarized in this particular slide that uh, circuit is simple. That is that is the advantage of this particular biasing uh, arrangement. Circuit is simple, but the disadvantage is that uh, the Q point uh, shifts with temperature. So this is not at all desirable as far as our requirement is concerned. Okay, so now. Uh, let us uh, move to the second uh, circuit, uh, I mean, second biasing topology, which is known to be the collector to feedback bias. Now, uh, in, in the uh, while we will be discussing about the feedback circuits in the latter module, perhaps in module three or uh, module four or module five, 
there also you find a different implication of this uh, collected to feedback bias but for the time being just uh, take a look at this collected to feedback bias circuit here we find that instead of connecting the rb from from this vcc terminal we are connecting this rb from this terminal so almost the same circuit but the connection is a bit different instead of connecting this point over here we have connected at that particular point so this is known as a collector to base bias so it's a kind of feedback there is a kind of feedback but you right now you will not be in a position to understand what type of feedback it is or whether essentially it's a feedback or not but uh, uh, right now you can appreciate or you can just assume that uh, there is a feedback until and unless you understand the concept of feedback you must not admit that the feedback is present so anyway for this circuit also we can always uh, calculate this uh, uh, collector current and the collector emitter voltage under dc condition now uh, if i just uh, observe this uh, uh, kvl or if i apply the kvl across this output loop you see that this vcc the total voltage supply voltage is divided into uh, three different segment one is your this ibrb drop takes place across this loop you have ibrb drop and you have this uh, vb drop over here which is essentially equal to vce so ibrb plus vb this drop plus ic plus ib into rc the total current is that is flowing through this terminal is ic plus ib and at this particular point at this particular node it has been divided into two segments two branches are there one is through this ib and other one is through this that is ic so the total current that is flowing through this is ic plus ib so ic plus ib into rc plus ibrb plus vb that is equal to your vcc so what you find is ib is equal to vcc minus vb minus divided by uh, beta plus 1 into rc plus rb so because you know that ic is equal to hap times ib icq is equal to hap times ib so hap is equal to beta so uh, accordingly you can calculate the value of ib the base current and uh, if i know the base current uh, i can easily put the base current in this equation to obtain the vcq that is equal to vcc minus icq into rc so this is all about the collector feedback bias now let us try to analyze whether this collector feedback biasing circuit increases the stability with respect to the previous biasing arrangement that is the collect that, that is the fixed bias circuit or the base bias circuit now you can do the mathematics but uh, here uh, i have uh, preferred to uh, use this uh, kind of uh, analytical expression or analytical model to identify whether this particular circuit this collector to feedback bias increases the stability or not now last time we have seen that if i replace the, the transistor by means of a different transistor even if i increase the temperature the beta this hfe might increase uh, last time you have seen that hf increases from 100 to 150 at 25 degree centigrade the hf value was 100 and at 150 degree centigrade the hf value was 150 so uh, might be uh, there could have been some change in temperature or it can also be true that the temperature is fixed but because of the non availability of uh, transistor having a same beta value you are compelled to use a different beta value a higher beta value from 100 to 150 but in any case the bottom line is that the value of the beta that means the hfe is increased now if hfe is increased then what happens for a fixed uh, base current if ib is fixed hfe is increased so obviously ic will also increase because ic is equal to beta times ib as you know from this particular uh, equation ic is equal to hfe times ib so even if your hfe i mean ib is fixed if HAB is increased, then ICQ must increase. Now, if IC increase, then VC must decrease because, you know, once again, let us refer to that equation. VCQ is equal to VCC minus ICQ into RC. So if IC increases, so VCQ must decrease. Now, if VC decreases, what happens? As I've already told you, that VCE means what? VCE means basically the voltage difference between this point and that point between this point and that point this is the voltage difference now if i observe the base current over here ib so how to find out the base current so here you have this voltage vce between this point to that point so this vc and you have this vbe suppose this vb is fixed this vb is fixed like 0 0.7 volt vb is fixed that is 0 0.7 volt now if by some means vce is reduced so obviously this particular for a fixed value of rb this particular transistor is having a lower uh, drive drive is lower so as a matter of fact i will be less right so i will be less because this supply is is less now vc is 
reduced to some extent. So as a matter of fact, IB will be reduced. Now if IB is reduced, but HF is increased, so your IC value does not change that much or does not increase that much. So I can understand or anybody can understand that this collector feedback bias increases the stability by some means. Because if I make any arrangement to increase the IC, the circuit itself is having its own provision to reduce the IC so that the IC does not increase that much, but which is not the case previously. If I go back to this circuit once again, the collector, I mean this uh, fixed bias circuit, in which case you will see that if IB, uh, if the beta value increases, then you see that this IC increases. Even if for a fixed IB, if beta value increases, then IC will increase. As a matter of fact, once again, if IC increases, the corresponding ICBO, the temperature is increased, so ICBO will also increase. As a matter of fact, if IC increases further, a point will come when the value of IC that is flowing through the circuit, a value of IC will come which is not at all acceptable by the circuit topology. And this leads to what is known as thermal runaway. That means the value of current that is flowing through the circuit, that is flowing through this uh, uh, collector terminal is well above the required limit. So uh, this particular condition is known as thermal runaway. So this thermal runaway, this particular condition is very much uh, possible for this uh, fixed bias circuit and which is not at all acceptable in our case. We cannot uh, expect this uh, uh, thermal runaway because ultimately it can destroy the circuit. It can destroy the uh, uh, bipolar junction transistor as a device. So uh, whenever you find that there is any chance that uh, the collector current is increased by some means, so the circuit must have, this entire topology must have some arrangement so that it can take into account that particular thing and it can have some mechanism to reduce the IC by its own which is not at all possible for fixed bias circuit. Now for collector to uh, uh, base uh, feedback bias or collector feedback bias, we have seen that this particular arrangement is made by the circuit itself. If I, HF increases, then IC increases. As a matter of fact, VC decreases. Now if VC decreases, this, this base current will get less drive, minimum drive, as compared to the previous one. So since it is getting minimum drive because this is the VC value, so VC is basically your VC because emitter is grounded. So VC is, uh, if IC increases, VC will reduce. Now VC will reduce, this potential will be constant, VB drop always 0.7. So the base current is how much? This potential minus 0.7 by RB. So if this value is reduced, so obviously for a fixed value of RB, I will also reduce. Now if I be reduced, then uh, obviously IC cannot increase that much. So uh, we must appreciate that this collector feedback by circuit is much more stable with respect to the previous one, that is the fixed bias circuit or the base bias circuit. So uh, in brief, we can say that uh, uh, as far as the circuit requirement is concerned, there is no such change with respect to the previous one. We have uh, only uh, two resistances, RB and RC, and one uh, supply voltage VCC, like the previous circuit, this uh, fixed bias circuit or base bias circuit. So it is not at all complex with respect to the previous one. But the advantage is that uh, a relatively stable Q point we can have in this particular case. But uh, the AC characteristics is relatively poor. But right now, you uh, must, must not understand the meaning of this term that relatively poor AC characteristics. So whenever we will be discussing about the, the feedback amplifiers uh, the, in some later model, then you can understand that the AC characteristics is poor. But uh, right now, what I can say is, Whenever you have a feedback kind of thing, so you must appreciate that this collector to feedback bias circuit provides some feedback. From output to input side, there must be some feedback. And in any amplifier circuit, whenever there is some kind of feedback, uh, the gain of the amplifier is reduced by some means. Uh, perhaps uh, if you have studied the uh, control system already, then you know that uh, the gain with feedback is given by A by 1 plus A beta, or A by 1 plus A B, where B is the feedback factor. A is the open loop gain. And the closed loop gain AF or gain with feedback is given by A upon 1 plus AB. So uh, whenever the circuit involves a kind of feedback, then the gain value will be reduced to some extent. So uh, uh, without feedback, if the gain is 100, then with feedback, the gain might be reduced to 10 only. So as a matter of fact, we can say that the AC characteristics of, of that particular circuit will be relatively poor. 
but uh, that is all about the statement but uh, you have to uh, explain or you have to understand this uh, intuitively whenever we will be discussing about the feedback circuit it's in some later module now uh, uh, consider uh, this, this circuit uh, which is all about the emitted uh, feedback bias now uh, it is almost the same uh, like the the first one like a fixed bias circuit or base bias circuit with only one difference that we have connected one emitter resistance in series with the emitter terminal so if i compare this circuit with the previous circuit or with the first circuit of a fixed bias and base bias you will see that uh, here only the additional resistance re is connected over here but the other arrangements are are the same so accordingly you can find out the the base current uh, what is the amount of base current you will see that you have vcc over here you have vb drop over here vcc minus vb that you can write like IBRB plus uh, this IERD. And what is IERD? IE means IC plus IB. IE means IC plus IB. That means HFE IB plus IB. Because IC, you know, HFE into IB, that is the collector current, beta times IB, that is IC. And what will be IE? Emitter current. Emitter current is collector current plus base current. So base current plus beta times base current. So one plus beta times base current, that is the emitter current. So this emitter current, IE, that is flowing through this RE. So there's a drop. IERD drop takes place across this terminal. Apart from that, you have VB drop over here, and you have IBRP drop over here, and that constitutes the overall VCC. Now, if I uh, just write this KVL, the VCC will be equal to IBRB plus VB plus IERD. And if I replace IE by 1 plus HAB times IB, I can always get this particular equation that is IB is equal to VCC minus VB by RB plus HAB plus 1 times RE. And from that, you can easily find out the VCQ calculation. It's like the same VCC minus ICRC minus IERD. Now, here you have this, this emitter terminal is not grounded. So, here, whenever we measure the VCE, remember now the previously we have measured the VCE with respect to collector only, collector to ground because the emitter was grounded. But whenever we say it's a VCE, remember that VCE means collector to emitter voltage. Make no mistake that the VCE value which we have plotted for. Uh, this load line calculation, this IC versus VC, even for the transistor characteristics. So this VC means essentially the voltage difference between the collector terminal and the emitter terminal. But here the emitter, uh, previously emitter was grounded. So the collector potential is equal to the VC potential because uh, VE was at zero. But this time V is not grounded, emitter is not grounded. So that's why you have uh, four components over here. This is one component. Now you have an ICRC drop over here. You have VCE between this collector to emitter. There is a third component, and the fourth component is IERD. So all of them will constitute the total VCC. So VCC is equal to ICRC plus IERD plus VCQ. Now, if I assume that uh, the beta is very large, so in that case, uh, IC uh, and IE uh, they can be equated. That means, they are very close to each other. that means if beta is very large. And beta and 1 plus beta, they are almost comparable. Like uh, suppose beta is 500, so 500 and 501, I can always uh, make this uh, approximate sign. So VCC minus ICQ into RC plus RE. So to make the uh, calculation simpler, I can write like ICQ RC plus RE. So accordingly, you can uh, have this uh, DC load line equation, DC equals minus ICQ. Once again, uh, let us try to uh, analyze this uh, the stability uh, of this particular circuit so uh, suppose uh, let us take the same uh, constant that by some means uh, beta value has been increased maybe because of the use of some other uh, transistor or maybe because of the increase of the temperature uh, beta has been increased to some extent now if beta is increased in ic as well as ie will also increase because uh, you know that uh, ic is equal to beta times ib or uh, ie is equal to one plus beta times ib so if beta increases by any means so this ic this collector current or emitter current will also increase now if ic or ie if ie increases then obviously what happens this emitter this potential will also increase because what is that potential this emitter potential ve this emitter potential is nothing but ie into re the emitter current multiplied with the resistance re emitter resistance now if ie increases then this emitter uh, this particular potential will also increase ve will also increase now if ve increases then obviously the IB will reduce. Why IB will reduce? Because if I observe the drive for this uh, base current IB, so here we have in one side you have VCC and the other side you have this this particular thing, this 0.7 volt drop and this one. Now, if this this potential increases, 
if this potential increases by some means then obviously this potential also increase because these two are 0.7 volt apart this base potential and this emitter potential they are 0.7 volt apart if this emitter potential is at like uh, say 1.7 volt then obviously you can easily calculate that uh, this uh, base potential what is the potential at this point because base to emitter that drop must be 0.7 volt so it will be like uh, 1.7 plus 0.7 so uh, 2.4 volt over here so if it is 1.7 volt at this particular point so it will be at 2.4 volt right now if this is increased from 1.7 volt to 2 volt so it will this this potential will also increase this base potential will also increase by uh, this point 3 so it will be like uh, now uh, 2 plus point that is 2.7 volts so initially it was 2.4 volt now since this potential is increased so this this base potential will also increase to be 2.7 volt so this potential is 2.7 this is fixed so the difference is reduced to some extent for this base current so drive is reduced so vcc minus db by rb that is the base current since because of uh, uh, increase in the value of ve this base current is having a lower drive and as a matter of fact ib reduces now if ib reduces uh, uh, and uh, even if the beta is uh, increased uh, but ic cannot increase that much you must appreciate this one that initially suppose uh, beta was like 100 and your ib is like uh, 10 microampere so in that case uh, your ic value will be like 10 microampere into 100 that is 1000 microampere which is equal to 1 milliampere right now suppose beta has been increased from 100 to uh, say 200 now if the ic is reduced from uh, 10 microampere to say say 5 microampere in that case or, or say 8 microampere then obviously you must understand that even if the beta is increased by 100 percent from 100 to 200 but uh, the ic cannot increase that much so the increase of ic can be restricted can be regulated by some means using this particular circuit so i can say that the circuit is a little bit stable with respect to the simple fixed bias circuit in which case you have you don't have any emitter resistance connected over here now if i connect emitter resistance so once again this particular circuit acts like a feedback but uh, you uh, must not understand what type of feedback it is until and unless you uh, appreciate the topology of any feedback amplifier but uh, uh, by virtue of this particular element this uh, emitter resistance uh, this feedback is taking place from the output to the input side but what type of feedback what is the topology you might must not understand right at this moment So uh, as we have already mentioned, it's like uh, similar to this base bias or fixed bias circuit with RE added. So uh, in terms of the complexity, this circuit requires three resistances. Uh, and uh, advantage is that it's a relatively stable Q point. But uh, disadvantage is that it requires more components and collected to feedback bias. And apart from that, AC characteristics, uh, because of the uh, presence of this uh, feedback kind of thing, feedback concept, and the AC characteristics is also uh, relatively poor and it requires more component with collected to feedback bias now uh, this particular biasing arrangement voltage divider bias which is uh, popularly employed in most of the amplifier circuits so we have to understand this particular biasing arrangement now here we find that there are four different resistances we have this voltage divider kind of thing we have r1 over here r2 over here we have the emitter resistance re and we have the collector resistance rc now uh, that can be solved by uh, two different mechanism one is that whenever the current I1 is entering at this terminal, uh, this particular node, whenever I1 is entering, now a portion of I1 will flow through this R2 and a portion of I1 will flow through this uh, uh, IB, I mean through this particular uh, branch. Now, if I assume that, so obviously at this point there is a, a division of resistance or accordingly there is a division of current depending upon the value of the resistance. Now, if I assume that uh, this uh, resistance of absorbed by this particular current along this path is very large that means uh, if ib is so there are two different condition one is that i uh, i2 is 10 times uh, greater than 10 times ib that means ib is very small ib is very small that means the resistance offered by the uh, transistor amplifier at this particular point this is pretty large so in that case what we can observe is that uh, this vb that potential is can be written like uh, R2 by R1 plus R2 multiplied with VCC only. That means we are just neglecting that kind because IV is very small. So as, as a rule of thumb, we, we are uh, assuming that this IV is very small with respect to uh, this uh, uh, I2 because 10 times of IV 
10 times of IB is also small than I2. 10 times of IB, that is also very much small as compared to I2. So under this condition, I can expect that almost all the current will flow through that. That means whatever be the current that is flowing through R1, this I1, almost all the current will flow through I2. So that's an, it's a kind of approximation we are making over here. Otherwise, we have to go for uh, this uh, Thevenin equivalent uh, uh, voltage source and Thevenin equivalent resistance to calculate the exact value for this base current and so. Now under this condition, I can easily find out what is the value of Vb, this potential at this point. So the current that is flowing is uh, I1 over here and I2 over here. So R2 by R1 plus R2 multiplied with Vcc. So a simple voltage divider rule says that this is the base potential, potential at this, this point. So what will be the emitter potential? 0.71 volt less, because here to here there is a 0.71 volt drop. So Vb minus 0.7, this is equal to Ve. Now from that, we can easily calculate this uh, current uh, through this emitter terminal, because we know this Ve value, Vb minus 0.7. Vb minus 0.7 is this emitter potential. So this potential divided by uh, Re will give you this emitter current that is Ie. And if I assume that uh, beta is very, very greater than one, it's like 500 or, or even, even larger, uh, then this ICQ, this collector current and this emitter current, they are almost same. So I can simply write VCQ that is equal to VCC minus ICQ into RC plus Re. But uh, practically, uh, if I want to use uh, the value of beta in the circuit. So in that case, it will be like uh, ICQ into RC and then IEQ into RE. But uh, since uh, beta is very large, then one plus beta and beta, they are uh, taken to be same, identical. So in that case, uh, uh, for a rough calculation, for a quick calculation, I can say that VCQ is equal to VCC minus ICQ into RC plus RE. That is all about the voltage divider bias to find out the uh, DC load line equation. And uh, yeah. Now this point is very important, the, the input-based resistance. So you have to ensure that, uh, okay, this uh, input-based resistance is very large as compared to this R2 resistance. Now whenever uh, you have a voltage, I mean, uh, current division at this particular node, you know, the current that is flowing through R1 is I1, and the current uh, that is uh, flowing out of this particular node, uh, one part is R I2 and the other part is IB. Now, the, uh, the resistance that is being offered by this entire circuit is nothing but R in base. Now, uh, if I want to replace this uh, input side of the transistor uh, by means of a simpler circuit, so this is nothing but a 0.7 volt battery, because as long as this transistor is in uh, active region or linear region, so you have a 0.7 volt drop. So obviously, you have to represent this one, this base to emitter by means of a 0.7 volt battery. And apart from that, you have this R in base. Instead of having this RE, you have this R in base. So what is that R in base? R in base is looking at this terminal. Suppose you are at this particular point. Now looking at this particular point, what is the amount of resistance being offered by the transistor? What is the amount of resistance? Suppose nothing is there. This transistor is not there. This RE is not there. So instead of this particular combination, I am having one resistance. And this resistance will govern the current that will flow through this path. So this current, the, this resistance, I am saying that this is R in base. That is the uh, input resistance looking at the base, base terminal. So looking at the base terminal, looking at this point, what is the voltage difference? Voltage difference you can find out. What is the voltage difference? So this is the voltage. What is the current drawn? This is the current drawn. So their difference, uh, their ratio is, is the R in base. So VE, you understand that VE potential at this point is nothing but IE times RE. IE times RE, that is the VE potential at this point. So I can easily write this IE to be IC plus IB. So IB into 1 plus HAP times RE. So that is quite obvious potential at this point. Now what is R in base? R in base is nothing but this potential divided by IB. This potential, obviously there will be 0.7 volt drop that you must appreciate. But if I just neglect this one, this 0.7 volt drop. So over here, so this potential this potential, potential between this point and that point, this is nothing but your VE. And if I neglect 0.7 volt drop over here, so this VE will be seen at this particular point. Suppose V is equal to uh, say uh, 5 volt at this particular point, VE, that is emitter potential, absolute value is 5 volt. So this value will be like 5.7 volt. But if I just neglect this 0.7 volt drop, so I can visualize that, okay, at, at this particular terminal with respect to ground, the voltage difference is VE. 
Eventually, the value is not V, rather VB, that is the base potential, which is 0.7 volt higher as compared to VE. But if I just neglect 0.7 volt drop for a quick calculation, then you see that this potential will be at VE. And what is the current that is being drawn by this circuit? So the current that is being drawn by the circuit is IB. So what will be the resistance? I don't know what is there. I don't know what is there, uh, this transistor and this RD combination. I don't know. Suppose there is a black box. There is a black box kind of thing. Now, how to find out the impedance or resistance provided by this black box? We have to observe what is the voltage, what is the voltage at the input terminal of, of that black box, and what is the current being drawn. So what is the voltage? The voltage is, at this particular point, the voltage is basically VB, the base potential, which is 0.7 volt higher with respect to VE. But for quick calculation, I, I can uh, assume that this voltage is equal to also VE. So this is the voltage, that is the VE voltage. And what is the current being drawn? Current being drawn is IB, that is the base current being drawn. So looking at this terminal, looking at this terminal, the resistance offered by this uh, transistor and RE combination, this transistor RE combination, this entire thing will provide a resistance of RE base. That means input resistance looking at the base. So looking at this terminal, you have to find out the voltage drop and you have to find out the current being drawn by the circuit. So voltage drop is VE and the current being drawn by the circuit is IB. So the base resistance RE base will be like VE by IB. Now already we have developed this equation, V is equal to I E R D, that is equal to I B into H A B plus 1 into R D. So from that, if I just put the value, uh, you are getting that this value is like H A B plus 1 times R D. Or uh, since H A B is very large as compared to 1, so I can approximate it to be H A B times R D. So uh, this value H A B times R D, if H A B is like uh, 500 or, or uh, 800 or very large, and R D normally in the order of few hundreds of ohms. So in that case, if that value is, is very, very large with respect to R2, suppose R2 I have selected to be only 10 kilo ohms, and here I am getting like 100 kilo ohms. So obviously you must appreciate that most of the current that is uh, that is flowing through this R1, most of the current, or almost all of the current will flow through I2. So this is a kind of approximation that we are making at this particular point. So uh, we are saying that uh, the, the load provided by uh, this particular uh, transistor is very large so that uh, almost all the current will flow through this uh, R2 path. That means I2 will constitute the almost all the component of I1. So in that case, uh, we, can, uh, we can follow that particular thing. And accordingly, we can calculate this one, the uh, correct emitter voltage. And if I go for any rough end calculation, so in that case, you can also go uh, for uh, your uh, uh, Kevin equivalent model. You have to find out uh, instead of having this R1 or R2 combination, you can go by the Thevenin equivalent voltage, Thevenin equivalent uh, resistance to represent this entire thing, to represent the uh, input circuit or base emitter circuit of that particular transistor uh, amplifier. Yeah, so accordingly, uh, uh, the base potential. So if I uh, am very much. Uh, If I would like to uh, find out the value perfectly, so in that case, uh, the base potential at this particular point, so you have R in base over here, you have R in base over here. So basically R2 and R in base, they are coming in shunt. The total current that is flowing is I1. Now the, the current will be divided into two segments. One is through I2, second one is through IB. Uh, so what will be the base potential? So base potential is basically R2 parallel R in base. We have two resistance over here, R2 parallel R in base divided by R1 plus R2 parallel R in base multiplied with VCC. So you don't have only R2 over here. You have R2 in shunt with R in base. So the effective equivalent resistance between this point and ground is not only R2, but also you have some R in base. So R2 parallel R in base. So you know the uh, value of two parallel resistances uh, connected in shunt. So R2, uh, R2 multiplied with R in base divided by R2 plus R in base. So this is nothing but R2 parallel R in base. So this is the equivalent resistance at this point, R equivalent. So what will be the current? So the current that is flowing through this is nothing but, yeah. So the current, uh, so if I want to find out the uh, voltage at this particular point, VB, uh, you have R2 parallel R in base divided by R1 plus R2 parallel R in base multiplied with VCC. And if I put those values, because uh, R in base, you have already seen, it is uh, equal to HAP times RD. R in base is base resistance, or 
the uh, resistance provided by the uh, this transistor configuration looking at the base is nothing but hap times re so uh, this one uh, we have represented by means of req where req is nothing but r2 parallel hap times re so uh, if i go by this exact calculation so this will be the value accordingly you have to put the value otherwise if you think that rn base is very large with respect to r2 then you can uh, consider that uh, this rn base since it is very large so i can uh, consider it to be open circuit the very high resistance is present so i can simply neglect this one so in that case if r n base is uh, like an infinite uh, having an infinite resistance so in that case it will be like r2 by r1 plus r2 into pcc as we have seen last time this one r2 by r1 plus r2 into pcc but if you are very much perfectionist so in that case uh, you have to go by this formula and you have to find out the value of vb now let us uh, try to observe the uh, advantages and disadvantages of this circuit so you will see that uh, this circuit uh, this voltage divider bias circuit is much more stable against the changes in hfe uh, but uh, you require more resistances more components than the other biasing circuits but it is much more stable why much more stable because you see here this base potential uh, if i just observe this particular equation this base potential you have hfe in the i mean beta in the numerator side you have beta in the denominator side so even if uh, beta increases or reduces by some extent it will affect both the numerator as well as denominator because this r2 parallel hfe re that is the req which is a function of uh, beta that is present uh, both in the numerator as well as in the denominator so as a matter of fact the variation of if even if the beta changes by 100% but uh, it will not affect the uh, vb value to increase by 100% and obviously depending upon the value of vb uh, you have Uh, the corresponding value of uh, ib because vb is equal to ve plus 0.7 and from that uh, you can easily calculate what is value of is ie and if you know ie you can easily calculate what is ib so even if the beta changes the uh, but the other parameters are constant r1 r2 rc re so these parameters are constant pcc is fixed so even if beta changes uh, by some means uh, because of temperature issues or because of the change or non availability of the transistor having a smaller beta uh, then also you see that this vb this potential uh, will remain at a relatively constant value this particular point so as a matter of fact you can expect that this base current is much more stable with respect to the other circuit arrangements like fixed bias circuit or other bias circuit so this is the summary of uh, this voltage divider bias now we have uh, only one biasing circuit left that is the emitter biasing circuit now here uh, we find that uh, instead of having only one supply voltage we have two supply voltage so dual supply voltage is needed one is connected to vcc i, I mean uh, uh, through this collector we have this vcc plus vcc through this resistance rc and the other the, the, the second supply voltage is connected uh, to this emitter terminal through a resistance re so instead of having one supply voltage you require here two supply voltage vcc and minus ve over here you have to provide a minus v otherwise this transistor will not be operating in the active region because you have an npn kind of thing and uh, this uh, base is of p type emitter is of n type and we know that this base emitter junction has to be forward biased so obviously this uh, n terminal of the emitter terminal must be biased with some negative voltage so that's why it's a negative v over here but for pnp transistor the situation will be just reverse you have plus v over here and minus v is over here for pnp transistor so uh, you have to find out the base current so base current so you have rq over here rq is connected in this way because already uh, you know that because of minus ve this potential is is at minus ve plus 0.7 so and this potential is is at zero so what is the difference the difference is ve minus 0.7 so obviously base is getting a drive so even if this terminal is connected to ground base is getting a drive which is not case in earlier 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 cases so uh, you can calculate the base current uh, by using this kvl so you have ve over here you have points and will drop over here and uh, apart from that you have two uh, voltage drop one across this resistance rb that is ibrb and second one across this resistance uh, re that is iere so ibrb plus iere these are the true drop and you have another drop that is points and will drop over here which is equal to ve so accordingly i can calculate what is the base current ib is equal to v minus 0.7 divided by this one so this will give you the base current 
and what about the collector current you know that collector current is the beta times of this h a b times of this i b so i c is this much and i e this emitter current is the summation of the collector current and base current and uh, from that you can easily find out the vc value so vc is this much vcc minus i c r c minus i e r e and now we have plus v e over here because this is not grounded remember this is not grounded here this point is connected to a negative supply so the total drop uh, i have to consider like this vcc plus v is the total supply vcc plus v is the total supply this point you have vcc you have this point minus v so what is the total supply is vcc plus v right and what is the total drop total drop is uh, icrc this drop you have vc drop over here and you have ierd drop over here so three drop and uh, two supply so vc vcc plus v is equal to vc plus icrc plus ierd so if i want to represent if i want to uh, get the dc load line so i have to keep uh, vc in the left hand side of the equation and the other 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 parameters are in the right hand side like uh, collector current emitter current and uh, the supply voltage this is empty and assuming uh, beta is very uh, large beta very very greater than 1 so ic and ie they can be considered to be equivalent they are considered to be same so i can write like vcc minus ic into rc plus rd plus pe now from that you can draw the dc load line now while drawing the dc load line remember that uh, this uh, this is the condition vc is equal to vc minus icrc plus rd plus v now from this uh, particular equation you can draw the dc load line by uh, considering two different uh, condition the one condition is that ic is very small ic is zero in which case you will be getting the uh, vce of condition and vc of condition is how much so far you have seen that this vc of was vcc only for the other circuits like uh, voltage divider bias or collector to base bias or fixed bias circuit you have seen that even if the uh, whenever the current is equal to zero collector current equal to zero ic equal to zero the vc value is like vcc that is a vc of voltage that is vcc when the switch is off but here you see that uh, even if ic is equal to zero vc of is not equal to vcc rather vcc plus v because you have supply voltage over here minus v so when this is zero so you have vc of so when the uh, switch is off In the cutoff region, uh, you have uh, this VC of is equal to VCC plus V, and whenever the uh, your collector emitter voltage zero, so putting this value to be zero, you can find out the value of collector current, which is nothing but the uh, saturation current uh, that is flowing through the circuit, and uh, which is nothing but VCC plus V divided by RC plus RD. So once again, uh, you have uh, these these two points. One is VCC plus V by RC plus RD, and this point VCC plus V. so uh, slope depends upon this rc plus rd not only on rc but also on rd uh, slope of the uh, dc load line depends on these two parameters rc and rd and uh, these two extreme points they are the function of vcc and v if uh, one of the values either vcc or v or both are changed then obviously uh, even for fixed rc and rd and this this value will be changed that means if rc and rd both are fixed uh, so the slope of the load line will be constant but if you change vcc or v then uh, this this blue line will shift uh, in parallel with this line it will shift in with parallel so that uh, the slope is remaining constant but these extreme points are are different so this is all about the load line for the emitter bias and uh, with this uh, i believe that uh, this uh, uh, second lecture of uh, bjt biasing is uh, completed